Well, welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 173, using number lines to round numbers, part of a rounding numbers series. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. I got a question sent in to me and I thought I'd just address it here on the podcast. Here is what was sent in. Some of my kiddos have trouble telling me which tens a number is between. For example, I'll give them 53 and ask them to round it, but they can't say it's between either 50 or 60. This is actually very common and is rooted in the fact that kids see numbers in isolation and they haven't built relationships around numbers. We can't just jump into rounding if students haven't spent time exploring how numbers relate to each other because that's all that rounding really is. My advice for how to help students is not an answer I can give in just a short podcast, so that's why I'll be be doing a few episodes to give you my top tips to help you build your students' number sense to help them be able to round numbers with understanding and not just a procedure. I know that rounding is usually taught as a place value concept, but I no longer really see it that way. Yes, I used to teach my students exactly like these anchor charts. Mm -hmm. For those of you listening, instead of watching the video, I'll give you basically the summary. Uh, it's typically that pr- those procedures that we've all done. We've taught our students this. You have them find the place that they're trying to round to and then underline it or circle it. So if it's the tens place, they underline or circle the, the digit that's in the tens place. Then you look next door. And if it's five or greater, then they add one more. If not, you know, it goes down. It stays the same. And the numbers in the front also stay the same, but the numbers behind become zeros. And it's basically just a set of rules and procedures. Now, I don't really want to bash on these, and I I always feel bad showing them, but these are prime examples of the anchor charts that I used to have in my room. You might even still have them in your room. So I do want to acknowledge that we've all used them. We all thought we were doing a good thing to help our students But let's also acknowledge that they are very procedural and they give kids basically a set of steps to memorize and follow instead of actually helping them understand and build relationships between numbers that then if they understand those relationships, they know how to round numbers. So as recovering traditionalists, what should we do instead of that steps and rules and procedures for them to follow? Well, instead... We do lots and lots of activities that build number relationships. If you are new here and you don't know what those are, I'll link up a video that I have about the four number relationships. But for now, I'm assuming you know what those are and you want some ways to help your students build them that will lead them into being able to round numbers easily and with understanding, not just a procedure. So my first tip for helping your students with rounding by building number relationships is make it visual. Just having the bare numeral on a piece of paper or you saying it out loud is not good. Of course, they will encounter rounding problems like that, but by helping them build a visual, that visual is something they can conjure up in their mind anytime they need it. So for example, when I think of needing to round, let's say 265, I'm visualizing in my mind a number line. But what numbers go as like the endpoints on that number line is depending what I'm rounding it to. Am I trying to figure out what hundred it's nearest or what 10? If it's hundreds, then I'm visualizing 200 and 300. That might be different in front of you, but in my mind it's 200 and 300. If it's tens, then I'm seeing 260 and 270. That's what I'm seeing on a number line. And then I'm figuring out where 265 goes on there. And once I can place it on a number line, then I can round it. However, the original question I got, she said that her students wouldn't even know what numbers to put on the number line. 
So they don't know what numbers the original number would even be between. So when you're starting out with number lines or number paths, if you work with kindergarten and first grade, that's the place you start is not with number lines, number paths. If you're not familiar with that, I'll link up another video that talks about why we shouldn't be using number paths before, uh, before second grade, basically. So anyways, we wanna start out with working with number lines and number paths, just building an understanding of what they are, not just jumping straight into doing rounding problems on a number line, if they don't understand numbers yet on a number line. So instead, we're just working on getting them familiar with number lines or number paths and placing numbers on those number lines. In John San Giovanni's book, Daily Routines to Jumpstart Math Class, he has a couple routines that focus on using number lines. This summer, Rosalba and I created a set of routines for the members of the Build Math Minds PD site. And in the number line ones, you have routines where you're doing that. You're thinking about placing a number on a number line, or if the number's already on a number, uh, on the number line, what are the numbers that go on the endpoints? And here's what some of those slides look like. So we start out with routines where we just are helping kids understand how a number path or a number line works. And then we move into ones where a number is hidden and it's basically like the endpoints on a number line. And you have to decide what number is there in the middle of this number path using what you know about how numbers relate to the numbers that are shown there. And it moves into using larger number paths all the way up into number paths that go into having 20 as the end point, or even ones where it's just part of the number path, not from zero to 10, but just parts of it. So it's all these different things, just helping kids get familiar with using a number path and seeing it in this way and kind of seeing like endpoints on a number path, just like they would on a number line. And then we move into, of course, using it as a, with a number line and having the endpoints on there um, and varying what the endpoints are and asking them what number could be at the actual point. And then it moves into a different style like this, where you aren't given the endpoints, you're just given the number on there and you have to decide what the endpoints are. Now, the cool part about this is it's not their typical kind. Yeah, it could be maybe zero and 20, but what else could be there? Like this extends beyond. And it's all based upon how that number that's on there, that point that's on there, how it relates to the endpoints. And we have this not just for whole numbers and large whole numbers, uh, but also for decimals and even some fraction work in here as well. So again, this is just available for our members, uh, but if you're not a member of Build Math Minds, you can come over and join. Just come to buildmathminds.com slash BMM. So whether you're a member or not, it really is just about having lots and lots of work with number lines. So the very first tip I'm giving you is to do lots of work with number lines or number paths if you teach kindergarten or first grade. Kids should become very comfortable using number lines and be able to visualize them even when the number lines aren't drawn out in front of them. They should be able to place numbers on a number line when two endpoints are, give, are given or if they have a number on the number line already, they should be able to tell you what the endpoints would be. This will get them started on their path to building number relationships and their understanding of the number line or the number path that will then lead them into being able to use the number lines to help them round numbers. So again, if you are a member of the Build Math Minds PD site, you have access to all of those number line routines and so much more to help you build these ideas with your students. If you aren't a member, go over to buildmathminds.com slash BMM for Build Math Minds to join. So I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so you can build the math minds of your students. I'll see you next week.